privileged to be on your program and also to talk about uh, the leadership or rule, some, some prefer calling it the rule of President Idi Amin Dada. Uh, my name is Dean Chibirige. I work with the Uganda Broadcast. Mr. Dean Chibirige, with all this vast experience, I believe you are a great source of knowledge and wisdom. Mm. And as we discussed earlier on, we want to expound more mm. on the history of Idi Amin Dada. Mm. Would you like to share with us a, bit, a small introduction of how he rose to being who he was before he took over power in 1971? You know, his rise to fame, popularity, and later on power. Uh, to start with, Yes. Uh, let me first put a disclaimer. Yes. Uh, audio? Yes. To start with, uh, let me first put a disclaimer. I'm lucky I was born during Idi Amin's dad, his uh, regime. So that means uh, I saw a few things that I would actually talk about with authority. Yes. But much of it I had. Mm -hmm. uh, the little that came into my ears uh, is about what transpired in our home. Uh, I cannot authoritatively come out and say I saw Idi Amin Dada do A, B, C, D, and blah, blah, blah. But, of course, being a scholar and uh, being a person serving in uh, a government institution, uh, there's a lot I've learned about the regime. Yes. And uh, I will talk from that point of view. Um, this is what I saw. And I can able to say this is evidence of what I know about Idi Amin. When I was growing up, uh, of course, I was born in 74, so by the time, by 79, I was around five years. The five year chap knows money. So uh, I was able to see the notes, the shillings by then, yeah. with Idi Amin's dad's face on there. Wow. Uh, of course, uh, by then, unlike today, uh, we don't see, I don't know whether it was uh, the order of the day, whether it was trending, uh, but uh, most uh, banknotes or money by then, uh, you could find faces of the leaders or very important guys on the notes uh, of what? Or the banknotes the or the currency. So uh, that one I saw. But what used to amuse me with what was on the bank note is the way the, the, the ceremonial army uniform that the president had, had uh, done uh, with the, all its decorations, the, the awards and the BCD. So I, would, I used to ask myself, but is this man so much decorated? Where does he get the award? Of course, by then I even didn't know that there were awards. But because somehow they bring out something different as compared to a person who's putting on a plain uniform. So that used to strike a lot uh, in my mind. And then later, of course, uh, in the 80s, uh, of course, we also had notes where we had the, 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 the figure of Dr. Milton Obote on the currency. Wow, when you came back to Obote too? Yes. And of course, uh, when you compared the two, uh, Bote was in his uh, uh, normal suit. But I mean, of course, in his ceremonial uh, suit, and that used to bring out something very different. So that one I vividly saw. Uh, two, because I'm starting with those I saw. Uh, the other issue was my dad was an engineer and uh, by then he was working with uh, uh, East African distilleries, uh, the ones that now make, uh, I think now they are called Uganda breweries in, in, in Zira. Uh, so, uh, 
there was uh, I think there was there was uh, uh, there was some kind of sensitization that uh, Uganda Broadcasting Service or UTV and Radio Uganda by them uh, were, uh, were, were, were in charge of having a film unit that would actually get to the people, those who would not afford TVs to screen the programs, developmental programs uh, to the community. Wow. So I think at uh, City Square mm. uh, and other open areas or community centers, mm. uh, there were screens all over, running government programs and running other international programs that were developmental. So that used to happen. I don't know exactly in Kampala, but it used to happen. My dad would stop, then we would watch some of those programs at night, or he would take us from home, and then we would go and watch some of those programs. I've never heard about that. That used to happen. Wow. So those are some of the things, much as a young person, that I actually do remember. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest I've had to read mm -hmm. and to understand and to learn from those who are actually uh, adult enough to one, analyze, two, to be a part of the government of President Idi Amin, but also those who are harassed during that period or during that regime. Uh, what I know that uh, President Amin was born in 1925, uh, born in West Nile uh, by a Kakwa father and a Lubara mother uh, in 1946, that is just after uh, World War II, he joined uh, the King African Rifles as an army man, but went straight to uh, cooking. He was a chef, uh, but uh, when you slightly take it at that level that he was a chef, you you obviously underestimate him, yeah. but those who have been trained by the British or by uh, most of uh, those countries that are first world, a chief is not a simple person, and a chief who is serving the army yeah. is not a simple person because in a day he can wake up and kill the whole unit by poisoning it. Yes. So it's a very important part of uh, the organization. And of course, uh, an army man is an army man. Uh, for those of us, even here, when we were, uh, we had just finished the university, the army lured some of our colleagues at the university to go and join the army. Some joined, they have friends who joined. The army and now the rose through the land. others join the police, uh, but they are finished their profession. Some are teachers, uh, some are lawyers, others were engineers, but uh, they went through the drilling. You go through the training, the nine month training uh, to become a cadet. Mm. Yeah, you, you do all the cores that a military man or the police officer should do. So even Amin himself went through that. He trained uh, like any soldier trains, and then uh, he found himself uh, in, 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 in the kitchen of the army. Yes. But because he had been trained by the British, a lot mm. happened. Mm. Uh, it is believed 
uh, they had discovered something in him more than the cooking was doing. So they taught him a lot about communication. The British are good at communicating mm. and uh, like other countries are good at communication but the British are better at branding. They communicate but they also up that communication by being bringing out a brand. Mm. They brand themselves. So uh, th that aspect of the branding makes them unique. I will give a very simple example of the Premier League uh, in England, in England, Britain. There are so many good leagues. Uh, the Spanish league is good. Where you have uh, uh, where you have uh, teams like Real Madrid, Barcelona with Messi and the rest. But after two teams, that is Barcelona and. Uh, Madrid, the rest you don't want to know. Yet they are also good teams. Uh, the Italians are good also. They have a very good league. But after Inter Milan, uh, Juventus, and uh, SC Milan, the rest you don't want to know. But when you get to the bridge, to the Premier League, people are supporting almost all teams, even those that do not have uh, the pedigree and probably the CV of the teams I've mentioned. Mm. Why? Because the British are good, uh, are not only good at communicating, but they are good at branding what they are communicating. So, uh, President Amin, or young President Amin, by then a youthful President Amin, learned that that was key. That was key, and he learned it from the British. So, uh, uh, but of course, in the military, you don't learn only to brand, but the branding should help you to fight your enemies and to win over your enemies. Mm -hmm. That is what military communication commands, and uh, that is what you can learn from it. So you learn all those, but, uh, all those uh, aspects of the military. Mm -hmm. Two, he. He later, uh, before Uganda became a protectorate, he went and fought, helped the British, the British uh, fight the Mau Mau. Oh. Yeah. In Kenya. In Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really worked on them. Yes, that is what I, 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 I can't say much, but there is a lot that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, he engaged in that work. Of course, an army man gets better by engaging in uh, battles. Yes. So he went, he fought in Kenya uh, for the British to downsize and also to, uh, to diffuse Mau Mau, but, but also uh, some Somalis, uh, because most of the tribes that border Kenya from the north and nomads, mm -hmm. and most of them uh, were, were so much into cattle wrestling. Mm -hmm. So that alone used to bring a lot of chaos within that region. So he was in charge of that. I once here sat with his son. Mm -hmm. He came and visited me. Uh, I'll give you a picture. Yeah seated with him here mm. and he told me that in when the East African Federation mm. was being dissolved uh, there were issues there were a lot of issues in the 70s but uh, actually they had an issue with Kenya uh, and uh, Idi Amin wrote a letter this is what his son says. He wrote a letter to Musei Jomo Kenyatta and told him, uh, Sir, do you remember the boy who saw you hidden in a basket at a roadblock, British uh, roadblock, when you steal a Mau Mau? 
and then you see my dream to keep quiet that was me so if I was good and if I let you off the hook at that point at at the expense of me dying myself mm. because in Yame if you let the enemy escape then it is you to die mm. uh, why can't you seize whatever you're doing to let Uganda and Kenya stay at peace much as you have different Kenya has differences with Uganda so he had done a lot of, of, of work uh, as far as uh, fighting mm. on behalf of the British was. Of course that helped him uh, rise to the rank of lieutenant. He also got uh, the offer to train at Sandhurst. Uh, I don't know how many people, how many Ugandans have trained at that military academy at Sandhurst. The latest I knew for the, the, the was the, the son of uh, the first son of President Museveni, uh, Major General Mohawas. But of course, we've had other people, but I think there are very few Ugandans. And of course, uh, that place they only take, or in that military academy, they only take, take cream de la cream. Mm. So, uh, him being a Sandhurst student, mm. of course that elevated him to uh, a different what? Level. level. Uh, and uh, he was also uh, an Air Force man. Oh. Yes, an Air Force man. If you go and check most of, you see, uh, members of the Air Force mm. normally have something, uh, a symbol here, like but oh, yes, yes, so you that. can check all his uh, photos. photos and what uh, whenever you be putting on a military uniform, mm. uh, that symbol, the Air Force symbol, was wow. would be part of mm. that. So you also said he was a means uh, Obote's darling. Obote's so. I'm, 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 I'm just giving you mm. the preamble mm. of who Amin was mm. at the beginning, uh, rising up through the military and what he did. Mm. And uh, also uh, trying to qualify him. Mm. You see, I'm not saying he didn't make mistakes, mm. he made mistakes, but uh, you. You, 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 you cannot rise up to where he was and you're somehow lacking qualifications. Mm. Yes, it is hard to become. So he was not just a soldier who no, got not, lucky? No, mm. not just, it's not that. Mm. And uh, of course, by people thinking that he always did not qualify, yeah. that is why he even became president. Because they kept and uh, smiting yeah. him. Yeah. We am a sportsman, yeah. and when you underestimate a man, he will beat you. On record, it will be he won. Whether you say he was lame, whether you say what, on record, they will say he was the champion. Uh, I mean himself was also a great athlete. Mm. He was a boxer and he represented Uganda uh, ably at the amateur level. Uh, if you go to National Council of Sports mm. and you dig some of the information, by then uh, National Council of Sports didn't exist. But there was uh, an organization that existed uh, called the Uganda Sports Union during the protectorate times. And uh, Amin almost had a hundred amateur bouts. Yes. Uh, recently, when we had uh, an exhibition, mm. 
uh, at uh, the National Museum. I, I myself asked uh, Abre, Honorable Abra Award, who also uh, was a great athlete. Some people have known him to be a politician, but he was a great athlete and he represented Uganda, I think, at the Commonwealth and Olympics. But also he has a world record in the 200, I think 400 or 200 meters, I'm not so sure. But uh, I think that record still stands. I don't think there's any Ugandan who has broken that record so many years back. I think it was in 64. But him growing, uh, being uh, a marathoner, uh, and, on the, and on the national team, he knew that President Amin was also a fellow what? Uh, athlete, yes, and in the boxing. So there were what they used to call East African Games. Mm. And uh, Uganda had suffered terribly against Kenya. Kenya used to field uh, Bazungus. Mm. <laughs> so, and they were dismantling our men terribly. So the, the whole of the Ugandan team and the Ugandan supporters by then rallied, agree, agree, uh, uh, rallied uh, to support Amir. Uh, so this man had hit everyone in his life in the heavyweight category because he was told he was in the heavyweight category. And most of his wins were not by decision. When we talk by decision is when you fight and fight and fight until all the rounds are done and then they count points. Uh -uh. For Amin used to KO. Before, <laughs> knockout. 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 So, uh, during that same incident, uh, Honorable Agri explains that uh, the man who had actually disturbed them a lot was KO'd by President Amin in the ring. And the team Uganda jubilated and the entire sports fraternity. So, but he had uh, he had been a serious sportsman representing Uganda in the amateurs, but also in the military games. Uh, he did that. So, I if if it were you, you can evaluate a person who is a sp most of these sportsmen today are very popular people. Yeah. Hmm? True. And two. The sports uh, exposes you because you go and meet different people. You 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 visit different tournaments, and I think he also gained a lot. Two sport uh, like uh, war teaches you how to survive because you'll find an opponent who is not simple. And but you have to win, yes. And you find yourself doing what? Winning. Mm. So through all that, Sand has trained, mm. coached mm. through sports. Is a, uh, an elite amateur boxer, mm. uh, a military man mm. rising through the ranks. Yes. Because he, serving in the army, I can serve in the army for even fifty years, mm. but we we'll stay at the same rank. Mm. I may be a private all my life. Yeah. But when you're serving, rising from one rank to another, yes. it, it means there are two things. Either you're winning battles on the, on the battle line, or you're taking up trainings in military academies. Yeah. Because whenever you finish your course, then you're elevated. Whenever you finish your course, for for countries where there is no war, that's what they do to officers. Then for countries where there are people fighting, the moment you're victor, or the moment you're a winner of a certain battle, you're given what? A rank, depending on how. Uh, some, some ranks are even given at the battlefield. Because I remember President Museveni, there was a man he he decorated at the battlefield during the ADF war because of what he had done. 
So that uh, that is what happened. So this man probably he entered as a recruit at the level of private. Mm. Then do you know how many ranks are there from private to lieutenant? Mm. There are many. Mm. Private, corporal, uh, sergeant, warrant officer one, warrant officer two, hey. uh, second lieutenant, lieutenant, like six mm. to become a lieutenant. Mm. Most cadets now are bec- uh, second lieutenant, so they jump all those. Yeah. That is if you've gone to school yeah. uh, and you're getting to work. So that is what happened. So that, to me, in my understanding, that shaped the man that became the, pre- the third president of Uganda. Yeah. And, that, and that is what happened, that, that, that prehistory. Then later, because of what he had been doing, uh, Uganda becomes uh, Uganda becomes what? Independent. It becomes indepe- independent. Yeah. Uh, of course, the politics was going on, yeah. and uh, much as the British or the colonialists yeah. gave us independence, but. They wanted to maintain the status quo. Yes, because they were benefiting. Mm. Yeah, that is normal. They were benefiting. How? They were getting uh, cheap labor. Uh, they were getting uh, raw materials for their factories. They were. They were getting grounds where they could have their people work. Uh, the vice president, Nadiope, eh? the Chabazinga, because I think he was also not for uh, the oh, yeah, exactly. So that alone, when it created the virtue, uh, I think it triggered something within. Uh, the commander, as they used to call him, they used to call him commander. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, by 68, 69, uh, there was a rift, slowly rift between the commander and his supervisor, mm. and his president, Dr. Milton Obete. And on top of that, he noticed that the president was grooming someone, and that is uh, the late brigadier Oito Jok. He was a youth by then, but uh, rising at a very terrific speed in the 60s through the army ranks. And uh, that alone. Uh, also gave indicators to Amin or to President Amin that probably his time was almost out given that uh, he was not one uh, hailing from northern Uganda and two uh, the person who was being brought up was from the same home uh, with the president uh, that made him to start prepare a few things so and of course he himself he had other weaknesses which uh, other officers came out to report uh, that uh, really started distancing him from uh, from the president so that is how I mean, comes to power, close to power. Uh, at at the verge of, because you see, coups happen, but at times we may never know the actual uh, reasons why they happen. Yes. Uh, so these are theories. But mm. well, this is what. Uh, 
those who are around think. Mm. One, uh, one of the theory stipulates that actually, and and this is true, uh, uh, President Idamin had been under house arrest. Mm. Things were getting bitter. Uh, most especially when uh, President uh, when uh, President Dr. Milton Okote, who was actually president by then, yeah. had been shot at Lugogo. Yeah. He was shot. So, uh, and the, those who were very close to the president were pointing fingers to his army commander. So he was put under house arrest. Uh, things were getting but later released, but things were getting what? Uh, there, was uh, there was a lot of tension. And uh, it is said that uh, the military, which had uh, some West Nilers, but at the same time a lot of Northerners, the Cholis, the more so the infantry, yeah. uh, the, uh, and the Langley's in police uh, were planning uh, to, 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 no, to, 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 to downsize the West Nile as in the army. Oh. So, the West Nile has learned of that and they run fast to mobilize uh, and hijack the plan yeah. and reverse it uh, to their advantage. And by doing that, they got, uh, say, they found the president at his home and house arrest. They told him, we, we have taken over government. Uh, so uh, we need your assistance to become the president because you are commander oh, and you feel so you, you're saying Amin was just asked by other commanders to come and take up leadership exactly that is one thing mm. uh, and some say he, he refuted he, he refused he said how could you do this you you do you, you know how to run a government you know how hard it is run a government then they ask him if you commander if you don't allow if you don't accept we are going to kill you so i, I was saying um uh, and me yes was uh to just cut him briefly uh, he was born to uh, a police cadet yes. uh, in 1925. Mm. Okay? Yes. Yes, 1925. And then we, we are not sure where he grew up, though he claimed to have grown in, in Nakasero, but at a certain moment he grew in Arua, and then most of his life uh, he grew in Bombo. Oh. And yes, so he was picked from Marua. Uh, he, you know, either he came himself or someone brought him then. Yes. Boom, boom. He, he, he was there. He did not continue with further education. Yeah. Uh, so the question now was how the British went and picked him. So. The reason the British picked him, a lot of Nubians uh, who were soldiers who were brought uh, by Frederick Lugard mm. uh, in early 1890s. So those Nubians, they were soldiers, yeah. uh, Sudanese soldiers who were. Yes, so, so when I mean lived there, the British had the interest knowing that those people were soldiers. So they went and recruited among us the people and then recruited Idi Amin. So for him, as he went there with his uh, body and I think he, he, he got training, he was a junior officer. Yes. Uh, 
So I was actually told that he even have... fought in some wars in Kenya uh, for the side yes, of the I British did. government. That is the thing. In yeah. 1954, mm. he went to fight on behalf of the British colonialists mm. against the Mau Mau rebellion. rebellion. Yeah, so it is from there he got the promotion uh, of becoming a junior cadet officer. Wow. So by 1961, when uh, uh, Governor Crawford was handing over uh, the, the, the independence to Uganda. So I mean, there were two, uh, I mean, and the Sabano plots mm. were officers, but I mean, was still junior. Yes. He, he wasn't, he wasn't the linear main captain, but it came now in, 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 in 1965. Mm. Uh, I mean, and Obote became kind of friends. They had the deals. Uh, mm. Those, 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 those days, which of course many writers have written about, oh. is a, a gold deal in Congo. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember actually in history they were saying some of the reasons why they yes. overthrew the Kabaka was because of why he had some who were stealing gold from Congo and timber and what? Oh. <laughs> no, that, that was the accusation against the Sokote. Yeah. Which involved Amin and Opoti. Yes. So, as as the, as clues from that uh, findings were not clear, I will send you documents. You will read through. So, Opoti, um, Amin became a right hand man of Opoti. Yes. So, in in, in nineteen, even by nineteen sixty six, when Opoti send Amin to attack the Kabaka. Amin was mm. still yes, Amin was not a commander mm. but he picked him mm. because he was already his right hand man in ah, those days makes sense so Amin was also eyeing for a big job <laughs> yeah <laughs> so he used the opportunity uh, to to, to to go to to attack Lubiri. So the Lubiri attack, mm. Amini made sure he did it to so that he would become powerful person in the country. He was using for all the opportunities to show who he was because he was not known before that. No one knew about him. Mm. But he had interest of becoming a powerful person in the country. Wow. And uh, knowing Obote was not a military man, he also knew the weaknesses of Obote. Yeah. So he took the advantage. Mm. So the details, the details of the attack, uh, I've not focused on the details of that attack, mm. but real, they, they did the attack and he was the one commanding. Yes. And by the time he was commanding that attack, mm. in fact, Amin had started creating a separate military unit oh. from, the, from the National Army. He was already training his own uh, infantry. <laughs> wow. So Interesting. By the, time, by the time he went there, he already had... He already had uh, uh, an idea of what to do. Yes, yes, yes. yes Nelson, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yes. So, 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 uh, I yes, would happy. say practically. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, uh, I will send you a lot of the documents about his uh, okay. his his well. operations yeah, that he did there. Uh, what, what I would only say after the attack, so when he was appointed, uh, thereafter as the army commander, so he mm. began using the, he began using the opportunity yes. to, to, to plan for power. Oh, and Nelson, 
somewhere I don't know if I yes. read correctly, but somewhere they said that that coup, the Kawaka crisis, lasted three days. That the war in the palace was for three days straight, and they were fighting. Do you know about that? Uh, no, I think to me the the the, the war there. Of course, now from I, I rely on what people have written. Hmm. It was one day. Oh. It was one day. Okay. Yes. It, it didn't last for long. It was hmm. one day because there were more. There were more army personnel, and the Kabaka didn't have enough army. Even after sure. the day, you see, Kabaka was not having. It was not having army like the uh, general army. This was a command from the president. And which means the whole unit of the of of of, of the defense were aware of what was happening. So they might have withdrawn some of the soldiers who were giving support to Kawaka. Oh. So it was well planned the uh, attack. Wow! So, so after the Kawaka's crisis, so Amin so becomes very yes. powerful. Yes. So and and and, and they, he did it in a way. Mm. Uh, that it it favors him, so mm. definitely, of course, he 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 succeeded. But uh, uh, but he didn't know that this was something who somebody who was behind him. Uh, mm. But he thought that he was working against the the Kabaka, but it wasn't right. So uh, and. Uh, uh, of course, now when he he did the operation immediately, he got promoted to the rank of uh, the army chief, mm. the commander. Wow! So for being so for being a commander, he had a lot of responsibilities, and uh, we, we, within uh, the army, he he now had opportunities of where to recruit, mm. and so. And whom to recruit, when to recruit. So you might find some of the armies recruited in six states. Now some of them were from West Nile. Mm. And that was now an arrangement which I think Idan Min was planning uh, to, 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 to see how he would stage his call oh. in, wow. the, yeah, in, in, in the forthcoming. But, but of course, um, him, him having not having the opportunity to do it, mm. he tried it several times. But you missed it when we had those events. Uh, we used to have we brought some people who talked about how I mean overtook the coup and uh, and we recorded everything. Unfortunately, now I can't send this to heavy. Maybe. Thank you.